Hey guys, in this video we're going to look through the emissions trading scheme. So we're going to go under, the, go over the basic underlying concepts of what an emissions trading scheme is. So an emissions trading scheme involves a cap and trade system. So what it does is that it puts a price on carbon. So it puts a price on carbon emissions. So why this is very effective in in disincentivizing businesses to emit is that because they have put a price on carbons this adds to business costs. And for businesses to maximize profits they need to cut down business costs. So this incentivizes businesses incentivizes businesses to decrease CO2 emissions. So with this in mind we're going to look at this cap and trade system. So this cap and trade system involves two parts. Firstly we have the cap and secondly we have the trade. The cap represents the maximum annual emissions target. So in the economy businesses can only emit so much carbon dioxide into the economy and this can be easily measured by a central body or even uh, disclosed by the businesses themselves. The trade system involves pollution permits that can be traded in the pollution pollution, pollution double L pollution permits that can be traded. So essentially what this is, is the government has put a market for carbon. And then here in this market, we will see an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity of carbon uh, emitted into the atmosphere. So we're going to look at this in terms of a market diagram or demand analysis, demand supply analysis. So in this horizontal or this vertical axis rather, we, instead of having the price, we have the the market price of pollution. So I'm just going to note this is the market price of pollution permits. So instead of being the dollar sign, I'm just going to note this is the market price of pollution permits. And here instead of being the quantity, this is going to be the quantity of permits available. So since there is a cap or a maximum amount of permits in this market, the supply of permits is actually a vertical line. So this is the supply of permits. The demand for permits is again downward sloping. We're just going to note this as the demand for permits. So how does this work in disincentivizing businesses to emit carbon is that firstly there is a maximum amount of emissions that can be let into the atmosphere per year. And so immediately that will restrict the number or the amount of CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. So immediately this reduces CO2 emissions because there is a cap. Secondly, however, as we can see that when the demand for permits increase, when people want to emit more, so let's say this demand for permits shifts to the right to, say, D2, we can see that the price to purchase these permits to emit actually increases from P1 to P2 up here. So as a result, when those businesses who are environmentally friendly, who have developed environmentally friendly uh, ways to produce, they can actually sell their allocated permits on this market for pollution permits. And as a result, that could, instead of cutting into business costs, it can actually add to business profit. So the incentive here is that it could add to profit when these firms, when there is an increase in demand for permits, people can actually or supply to this market and sell their permits 
at this higher price at P2. So the overall effect is that firstly we have a automatic decrease or immediate decrease in CO2 emissions due to this decrease in supply of permits as well as a possible decrease in emissions through this market mechanism because as the demand for permits increases this would incentivize or encourage businesses to decrease pollution so that they can sell their permits or their what is left of their um, permits on this market and as the price increases from P1 to P2 we will see that this could actually add to business profits so this is the basic idea behind an emissions trading scheme is that it creates a market for pollution and as with all markets an equilibrium can be found either here or here depending on the demand and as a result we will see that there will be a decrease in overall pollution and hence an improvement possibly in the long term both to our to our te intertemporal efficiency as well as the natural resources available for production.